Why was the Zonwalk class destroyer program cancelled? Believe it or not, the United States government has a system in place to flag and cancel military projects that go over budget. But more on that later, as in order to understand why only three Zonwalk class destroyers were built and the remaining 29 were cancelled, we need to look at the ship's history and understand how it came to be. Zomwalt was envisioned in 1994 as part of the SC-21 R&D program with a mission to design 21st century land attack ships for the US Navy. There were a couple of name changes before it was settled on DDG-1000, the Zomwalt class. Zomwalt class was supposed to replace the aging Arleigh Burke class destroyers and be a 21st century super destroyer for the next 50 years. It was designed for stealth and set new standards in automation, which would reduce its crew size in half. Additionally, it was supposed to replace battleships and provide naval surface fire support. For this reason, the ship was designed around its two advanced gun systems mounted in the front of the ship. As a 21st century warship, it was going to be crammed full of new and revolutionary technologies such as the integrated power system and total ship computing environment infrastructure which would run on Linux instead of the Aegis combat system that was used on Arleigh Burke class destroyers. Originally, the US Navy envisioned a 32-ship program costing $46 billion with each ship costing about $1.3 billion. But as costs mounted, the program size was reduced from 32 to 24 and then to 16 ships. By 2005, the cost of each ship ballooned to $3 billion and the Navy further reduced the number of ships to be built to just seven. But what made the Zomwalt destroyer so expensive? The Zomwalt class destroyer was going to be 40% larger than the Arleigh Burke class destroyer and have a displacement of nearly 16,000 tons. Due to the automation that was yet to be developed, the Zomwalt class destroyer would have a crew of only 95 sailors. For comparison, Flight 2A of the Arleigh Burke class destroyers has a crew of 380. With reduced crew size, the life cycle cost would be significantly reduced and thus more money could be put into capital for building each ship. But critics speculated that the 95% crew size was lowballed as it made it more attractive to receive funding. Eventually, the design team revised the minimum crew number. The latest publicly available crew size on the Zomwalt ships is 158, including the air wing unit. This is still significantly lower than that of the Arleigh Burke class, considering Zomwalt ships are much larger. That said, if Zomwalt were to experience major damage while in combat, it would have a lesser chance of survival compared to the traditional Navy ships of a similar size, simply due to having less crew members to save the ship. A key feature of the Zomwalt class destroyer was its stealth technology, a 610-foot-long warship that looks like a small 50-foot fishing vessel on the radar. To put this in perspective, Zomwalt had only 2% of the radar cross-section that an Arleigh Burke class destroyer had. It is a remarkable feat of engineering and it does work. However, stealth technology for such a large ship is extremely expensive. Critics questioned if it was even necessary for Zomwalt to be stealth. While it can be beneficial in certain situations, the second you fire a weapon, the stealth capability is severely diminished. Similarly, a lot of times ships travel in a fleet, which would certainly include non-stealth ships also. Others argued that being stealth will be an overwhelming advantage in littoral waters that are crowded with fishing boats, tankers and pleasure crafts. But regardless of where you stand on the stealth argument, it is clear that the stealth capability of the Zomwal class destroyers was a major contributing factor to the cost overruns. Arguably, the most iconic feature of the Zomwalt class destroyer is its shape, the tumble home design, which significantly reduces the ship's radar cross-section. But the stability of such a design was a matter of controversy as a lot of naval architects warned that a ship with a tumble home design would be unstable. This is Seajet, an advanced electric ship demonstrator that featured the tumble home design as a proof of concept. After many tests on the Seajet, the design was proven seaworthy. Moreover, in 2019, USS Zomwalt sailed through a storm causing sea state 6 conditions near Alaska. It turned out that Zomwalt was more stable compared to the typical hull design. 
The captain of the ship, Andrew Carlson, said that, quote, all told, I'd rather be on that ship than any other ship I've been on, unquote. So it's time to put to rest the idea that Zomwalt class ships were unstable. That part, they got right. As mentioned earlier, the Zomwalt class destroyer was designed around its two advanced gun systems, which featured a unique long-range land attack projectile, also known as LRLAP. This unique kind of artillery shell relied on propellant and GPS to guide it to its target up to 100 nautical miles away. Since the primary role of the Zomol class ships was to provide naval surface fire support, these guns were an integral part of fulfilling their mission. Originally, each LRLAP round was estimated at $35,000, as this figure was based on arming 32 Zomwalt class ships. But once 29 out of the 32 planned destroyers were cancelled, the price ballooned to a range of $800,000 to a $1 million. Just for comparison, a Tomahawk missile with a unit cost of $1 million has 15 times the range and 30 times the payload. In total, 150 LRLAP guided projectiles were procured at a unit cost of $477,000 before the program was cancelled due to its cost. This situation left three Zomwalt class destroyers with guns that had no ammunition, meaning that the ships could not provide naval gunfire support. Consequently, the Navy repurposed the Zomwalt class ships to surface warfare. There are talks of installing electromagnetic railguns on USS Lyndon B. Johnson, the third and the last Zomwalt class destroyer built, but the status of this is currently unknown. The dramatic increase in the unit costs of the Zomwalt class destroyers triggered a non McCurdy amendment breach, which was designed to curtail cost growth in the American weapons procurement programs. Whenever a cost per unit goes above 25% of what was originally planned, the United States Congress must be notified. If the unit cost goes 50% over the estimate, an automatic termination occurs unless the Secretary of Defense submits an explanation for why the program is essential to national security. In January of 2009, the unit price for Zumwalt class destroyers reached $5.9 billion, 81% over budget compared to U.S. Navy's most recent estimate, effectively breaching the non mccurdy Amendment. In April of 2009, Defense Secretary Robert Gates announced that DDG-1000 program will end at three ships instead of the seven ships planned at the time and the 32 ships planned originally. In fact, the construction of the third zone vault was almost canceled, but it was completed nonetheless to maintain the Bath Iron Works shipbuilding capacity. Shortly after, the U.S. Navy resumed production of older Arleigh Burke class destroyers, which are still being built to this date. According to the U.S. Government Accountability Office report, as of June 2020, only six of Zomwalt's 12 key technologies were mature. In summary, what killed the Zomwalt class destroyer was attempting to incorporate too many new systems and technologies all at once, which led to cost overruns and the eventual cancellation of 90% of the originally proposed Zomwalt fleet. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving us some ammunition. Hit like, share our video, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so we don't get cancelled like our friend Zomwalt did.